Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 9, Lesson 8, 1, 0 and Negative Exponents. Pearson Algebra 1, Copyright 2009. I'm Mr. Plarski and our objectives today are I will be able to simplify expressions with 0 and negative exponents. I will be able to evaluate exponential expressions. To be able to evaluate exponential expressions, we're going to need to be able to work with 0 and negative exponents. And to be able to work with zero and negative exponents, to learn how zero and negative exponents work. They are properties. We have two properties here. The first property is zero as an exponent. And what this says, for every non-zero number a, a to the zero is equal to one. And what that can be interpreted as is, any number that's not zero raised to the zero power is equal to one. We have some examples here. This first example, five to the zero is equal to one. We can see the whole number five to the zero power is equal to one. The second example, negative two to the zero power is equal to one. An integer, negative two to the zero is one. Here we have a rational number 1.02 to the 0, and that's equal to 1. Here we have another rational number, 1 third to the 0 is equal to 1. We can see no matter what kind of number we have, as long as it's not 0, when we raise it to the 0 power, it's equal to 1. Now let me show you a little side example here related to this negative 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. If we write this without parentheses as the opposite of 2 to the 0, this is going to be equal to a negative one because when we read this, some people are inclined to read this as negative two to the zero is equal to. No, this is the opposite of two to the zero. When we raise a number to a power, if we want to take the opposite of it to the power, we need to put it in parentheses as it is here. In this case, this really is like negative one times two to the zero, which is equal to negative one times one which gives the negative one so you can see if you raise something a negative number to the zero and the negative numbers not parentheses you're only taking the whole number to the zero power so that's just a little side there the second property is the negative exponent property for every non-zero number a and integer n, a to the negative n, is equal to 1 over a to the n. It's kind of like a pattern here. It's like an inverse. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. Here we have the example 6 to the negative 4. And by the negative exponent property, we can rewrite that as, and should we rewrite that as, 1 over 6 to the 4. Imagine, if you will, that 6 to the negative 4 is a fraction over 1, we have to correct this negative exponent. That's what this negative exponent property basically tells us, is that we should correct this, or to simplify 6 to the negative 4, we have to rewrite that as 1 over 6 to the 4. And notice the exponent is negative in the numerator, and when I move it to the denominator, it becomes positive. Same in this example. Negative 8 to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over negative 8 to the 1. If you imagine this over 1 as a fraction, this negative exponent of 1, negative 1, when I rewrite it using the negative exponent property and put it in the denominator, I make it positive. So let's see how we can use the 0 as an exponent property and the negative exponent property to help us simplify expressions. Example one, simplifying a power. We're going to be asked to simplify here, and this first example, part a, three to the negative two, is a direct application of the negative exponent property. The negative exponent property says if we have something raised to the negative power, to correct it, we rewrite it as a fraction under one, and we make the exponent positive. So 1 
or 3 to the negative 2, simplified or corrected is 1 over 3 to the 2. And we need to simplify the denominator, 3 squared, which is 9. So 3 to the negative 2 simplified is 1 over 9. Part B is a direct application of the zero exponent property, negative 22.4 to the zero power. Well, anything to the zero power is equal to 1. So the simplified version of negative 22.4 to the zero is 1. Now some questions that were asked after I taught this lesson were, Mr. Polarski, if there were problems such that have <coughs> exponents in the numerator and the denominator, how do we work with that? So if we had something like this, x to the negative 4 over y squared, or x to the negative 4 times y squared all over w to the third power, z to the negative 5 power, how would we deal with something like that? Well, we deal with this by applying the negative exponent property. And another way to say that, or think of it, especially when you're given something like this, and I meant this to be to the negative fifth, is if it's negative in the negative exponent in the numerator, you need to move it to the denominator to correct that. So in this case, we start with the x to the negative 4. We're probably going to end up with a fraction. So I put a fraction bar in, and x to the negative 4 to correct that since it's a negative exponent in the numerator, I move it to the denominator to make it a positive exponent. So that's x to the 4 in the denominator. The y squared, since it's positive, stays where it's at. Moving down to the denominator, we have w to the third, and since that's a positive exponent, it stays where it's at, so the w to the third stays in the denominator, and here we have z to the negative 5, and since it's negative in the denominator, to correct that negative exponent, we write it in the numerator. So let's jump on to example 2, see what that has for us. Simplifying an exponential expression. Here's some simpler examples compared to what I just did. We need to simplify these two expressions. In part a, we have 3 a, b to the negative 2. And using the negative exponent property, if we imagine this as a fraction over 1, we're going to correct this by leaving what has a positive exponent in the numerator. And this is 3 to the first. So when I go to make my fraction, I'll leave 3 in the numerator. This is a to the positive 1, so I'll leave a in the numerator, and I'll take b to the negative 2, and to correct that negative 2 power, applying the negative exponent property, that'll give me b squared in the denominator. So I have 3a over b squared. Part b of this example is 1 over x to the negative 3. Going back to the previous example, I said that if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, using the negative exponent property says we're going to move that exponent to the numerator to make the exponent positive. Negative exponents are bad math, so we always have to correct them. By correcting them, we simplify the expression. So since this is a negative exponent in the denominator, or denominator to correct that, we'll write that in the numerator, which will give us x to the third in the numerator, and leave us 1 in the denominator, but we don't have to write that 1, because anything divided by 1 is that anything. So 1 over x to the negative 3 simplified is x to the third power. Now that we've seen some examples where we were simplifying and working with the negative exponent property and the zero exponent property, example three brings us evaluating an exponential expression. So this problem where we're asked to evaluate 4x squared, y to the negative 3, for x is equal to 3 and y is equal to a negative 2, 
is going to have us working with negative exponents. You can see this problem doesn't have any zero exponents in it, but it will have us working with negative exponents. So we're going to use the negative exponent property to solve these problems. And in this, uh, we have two methods that we can use. Method one is where we're going to write the expression with positive exponents first. So we're going to take this expression and we're going to correct the negative exponents first. So when I go to do these kinds of problems, I just copy the original expression down, 4x squared, y to the negative 3. And I need to correct this negative exponent. Remember, if you imagine this is a fraction over 1, to correct the negative exponents using the negative exponent property, a negative exponent in the numerator gets put into the denominator. So our new expression with positive exponents is going to be 4x squared divided by y to the positive 3. After we write with positive exponents, we're going, then going to substitute the given values in. We're going to substitute 3 in for x and negative 2 in for y. So in for x, we're going to put in a 3, and in for the y, we're going to put in a negative 2. Rewriting that expression after substituting will give 4 times 3 squared over negative 2 to the third power. Now notice, I put the negative number in parentheses. Anytime you're raising a negative number to a power, it needs to be put in parentheses. We continue to solve this by doing some math here. We need to do these exponents before the multiplication, so this is going to become 4 times 9, because 3 squared is 9, divided by negative 2 to the third power is negative 8, because it's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Simplifying this a little further, that will give 36 over negative 8, or a negative 36 eighths. Put that negative out front there. Clean that up a little bit. It's a little messy there. So this is a negative 36 eighths, which can be reduced by a factor of 4. We can divide 4 into both the numerator and the denominator. That's the greatest common factor. And when we do that, that gives a final answer of negative 9 halves, or the decimal number, negative 4.5. Now look how long that was. This first method, where we write with positive exponents, then substitute, took up all this space. If we take and do this method 2, where we substitute first, where we take this expression and substitute the numbers in right away, so we'd have 4 times x squared, and x is 3, so it'd be 4 times 3 squared, times negative 2 to the third, because negative 2 goes in for the y. So the next thing I can do is correct this negative exponent of 3, and I can do the exponents at the same time, or some of them anyway. But we'll just correct that exponent right now. So that'll be 4 times 3 squared over negative 2 to the positive 3. Now you can see we're at the same point as we were right here when we corrected the positive exponents first and we've taken up way less space. Now the calculations go the same. We do the exponents so it'll give 4 times 9 over negative 8. Simplifying that that'll give negative 36 over 8 which we know then reduces to negative 9 halves, or the decimal number, negative 4.5. So we can use one of two methods here. I prefer this method, where we substitute first. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit more direct, but you can do either one if you choose. Example 4, real-world problem solving. In the lab, the population of a certain bacteria doubles every month. 
The expression 3,000 times 2 to the m power models a population of 3,000 bacteria after m months of growth. Evaluate the expression for m is equal to 0 and m is equal to negative 2. Describe what the value of the expression represents in each situation. So we have two things we have to do. Actually, three things. We have to evaluate the given expression for m is equal to 0 and m is equal to negative 2. Now, the given expression is right here. This expression will find the population of the bacteria after m months. We have to evaluate this expression for m is equal to 0 and m is equal to 2. Then we have to describe what the value of the expressions represent in each situation. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down the expression we're working with. And the expression is 3,000 times 2 to the m. And we need to evaluate that for m is equal to 0 and m is equal to negative 2. Well, when m is equal to 0, that means we're counting the population right now. When m is equal to 0, this is the current population. What I'm starting to do now, verbally, is to describe what the value of the expression means in each situation. When m is equal to 0, we are finding the current population. So when I substitute m in for 0 into this expression, 3,000 times 2 to the 0, and simplify that. Here's the zero exponent property. Anything to the zero power is one, so two to the zero power is one. Bring down the times 3,000. And 3,000 times one is 3,000. Now this number represents the number of bacteria. This is the number of bacteria, 3,000. So the current population of bacteria is 3,000. That sentence I just said describes the value of the value of the expression for the situation. 3,000 is the current population of bacteria. Is another way to say that. When m is equal to a negative 2, that means two months prior to the current population. So we're going back in time a little bit. We're going back two months. m is equal to a negative 2. So we substitute that into the expression 3,000 times 2, that's a times or a dot right there, to the negative 2. When we simplify this expression, we'll correct this negative exponent, so we have 3,000 over or divided by 2 to the second power. Doing the exponent or applying the exponent gives us 3,000 divided by 4, it gives 750. So what this number means is that there are 750 bacteria in the population and that would be two months before the current population. So two months ago there were 750 bacteria in the population. In this lesson, we've worked with zero exponents. a to the zero power is equal to 1. Remember, that can be interpreted as any non-zero number raised to the zero power is equal to 1. The negative exponent property, a to the negative n, is equal to 1 over a to the n. These are two important properties when working with exponents. This has been Mr. Polarski. Thanks for